بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continue on in our dars in fiqh in basic fiqh we reached the portion of the treaties where we were discussing hayd before we begin in the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam pertaining to hayd or pertaining to a woman's menses or a woman's menstrual cycle so we reach the chapter of hayd and i want to talk about the 10 things that are prohibited for a woman during her menses qala al muallif rahimahullah ta'ala wa yamna al hayd 10 ashya so the hayd the woman who is in her menstrual cycle she's prohibited from 10 things fi'l salat from making the salat wa wujubiha and also the obligation to make salat so the fuqaha they distinguish between also not just the fact that a woman is prohibited from praying but she's also prohibited from the obligation to pray meaning that if a woman prayed during her menses she would receive a sin and she would not fulfill her obligation the second thing is fi'l siyam and also for fasting that if a woman fasts while she is uh, during during her men- menstruation then this is also uh, something sinful and it is not accepted as a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu furad whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected so ibada of course has to be with sincerity to Allah but not just with sincerity but in accordance with the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the believing women uh, were not as we will study uh, as we get into some of the ahadith pertaining to hayd we'll find the statement of aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha and the uh, sahabia that uh, asked her about fasting and the prayer during uh during the menses of the women and she said we used to during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam make up the uh make up our fast and we were not ordered to make up our uh our prayer because and that's why the 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 sheikh distinguished the allama sheikh muqtasi imam muqtasi rahimahullah ta'ala why he distinguished and why he said al hayd is prohibited from 10 things and he said fi'l salat which is doing the prayer and then he said wa wujubiha and also the obligation to pray so those are uh, not only is she prohibited from praying but from uh, the obligation of prayer and also lets us know the fa'ida there is that she does not have to make up a prayer so women do not have to make up their prayer for their missed salat due to menses and that is from the rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in addition to to the salat and the fasting uh, another thing that women are prohibited from during their mens- menstruation is tawaf is making the tawaf going around the circumambulating around the kaaba in mecca because that's an act of ibadah and it's an act of ibadah which has to do which is similar to salat it is like praying uh, it has the status of prayer and this is in accordance with the statement of Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha idha hadat fa af'ali ma yaf'al al-hajj al-hajj ghayra illa tuwfi uh, tuwfi bil bayt hatta tatahari Mutafakun alayhi in this hadith, which is in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Aisha, which makes clear for us about the action of making tawaf around the Kaaba for the women that is menstruating. So she said, if a woman uh, is menstruating, then she can do all of the acts of Hajj except making tawaf around the Kaaba. 
until she becomes pure, meaning until she finishes her hive and she takes a shower. Another thing that the women are prohibited from during their menses is Kira'at al-Qur'an, is reading the Qur'an, meaning holding the Mus'haf. And this is in accordance with the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, La taqra al haith wa la junub shay'in min al-Qur'an. And this is Ruahu Abu Dawood. But the scholars of Hadith said this is Da'if, but also it is narrated in Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, wa Dara Qutni, wa Bayhaqi as well. And so, in accordance with this Hadith or this Athar, as it is mentioned, Mokuf uh, on, on uh, one of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, that Still, the fuqaha, they um, act and hold their view based upon this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, Do not read that the haid, the woman menstruating, should not read the Qur'an, nor should the person who is junub, meaning the person who has... Uh, from sexual impurities, akramakum Allah, meaning after having sexual relations and they haven't taken a shower. So those two people should not uh, read the Quran. And this is also in accordance with the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La yamassuhu illa al mutahharun, and this is in Surah Al Waqi'ah, that and no one should, should, uh, should hold it except. The mutahirun, except for those the purified ones, and the mufassirin, the people of tafsir, they explain that this is in reference to uh, the angels. This is in reference to the angels, and not. Uh, and, and, but some of the ulama, or many of the ulama, hold this also into reference to the Quran, not just in the in the hereafter, but also in the dunya. So, and Allah subhanahu wa taala knows best. But this is one of the things, especially according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed, that the women are prohibited from doing during their menses, which is holding the mushaf. Another thing, uh, so reading the Quran and holding the mushaf. Uh, with regards to holding, uh, or, or holding the mushaf and reading the Quran, that if they do it with a some some of the ulama say with gloves that it's permissible because then they're not actually holding the mushaf that they have something covering or some sort of covering over the Quran so that way they are not holding the Quran itself so some of the ulama make it permissible especially in the situation if a woman is half of the Quran and she is afraid of forgetting what she has memorized and and it becomes a necessity so in this situation that is permissible with gloves or with a cloth or something between the mushaf and her hand while she is menstruating. Another thing that is impermissible for the woman during her menstruation is lubth fil masjid, meaning to stay in the masjid. So to sit in the masjid uh, while she is having menses, this was prohibited during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the ulama say that due to the fact that women now they wear uh, uh, things that prohibit them from making the masjid filthy that in that situation that it perhaps it might be permissible but uh, to sit in the masjid the asal of this uh, hukum is that it is not uh, permissible the ulama also distinguish and say that as far as a woman going through the masjid, that this is permissible. A murur jawaz ba'dhum. So some of the ulama state that it is permissible for a woman to pass through the masjid as long as she's not going to sit in the masjid and as long as she can guarantee that she will not uh, make the masjid uh, filthy with her, her, her menstru- menstruation uh, blood, the Allah. Another thing which uh, a woman 
is not prohibit is prohibited from during her menses, it is having sexual relations. So it's not permissible in Islam for uh, women and men to have sexual relations when the woman is menstruating. So it is not permissible for a man to have relations with his wife when she is menstruating. And this is for obvious reasons, reasons, medical reasons, as well as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَاَتَّزِلُوا نِسَاءَ فِي الْمَحِيدِ وَلَا تَقْرَبُوهُنَّ حَتَّى يَتْحُرُنَ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in the Quran, He says, and stay away from the women during their menses. And do not come close to them until they have become purified. And that is in reference that coming close does not mean you cannot hug and, and kiss and, and do the other things that husband and wives uh, enjoy with one another. But what this refers to is the as having sexual relations, is the man entering the woman that this is not permissible when she is during during her menstruation. And also of other evidence is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, Isnu kullu shay illa nikah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do everything except have sexual relations, meaning that the husband and wife can enjoy one another as long as the man does not enter her uh, in the uh, in her vagina while she's menstruating as well as of course the anus is always impermissible regardless of whether she's on her menses or not and then another very important thing is the sunnah talaq and there are so many other messiah that come with this but just mentioning that also what is uh, prohibited during a woman's menses is to divorce her. It is impermissible to divorce. That is one of the times uh, uh, it is impermissible to divorce. So meaning if a woman is during her, having her menstruation or uh, or she is also f free from you know, she has already become purified and her and her husband have not had relations, then that would meet what's called the sunnah al talaq the, uh, the permissible time for talaq in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa Then the scholars, they differ whether if a man divorces his wife during her menses or during after having had relations with her, akramakum Allah, whether this talaq or this divorce would actually happen. And this is the difference. Some of the, some of the scholars, they say the sunnah of talaq, that if they don't get the sunnah of talaq, then the woman, then talaq is, does not happen. Meaning, so if it isn't when a woman is, has been purified after her menses and after, uh, and, and she has had no relations with her husband and, and uh, if, if it, it does, those two conditions are not met, then divorce does not happen because, and they use the statement of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, من أحدث في أمر uh, the, the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فرد whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. But another group of the ulama, and I believe this is the majority, the jamhur of the scholars, say that it is that talaq happens even on a menses, even on a woman's menses, or even after having relations with her husband, that talaq, divorce, happens. And, but they are, uh, this is a sin for the husband because it's a bid'ah. So the scholars have a very, very long monakisha or discussions and debates regarding this issue, each bringing, each camp bringing their evidences from Kitabillah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and in accordance with their understanding of those evidences with regards to that. But as, according to the madhab of Imam Ahmed, it is not permissible to, uh, or it is not permissible, the sunnah of, uh, you, you do not get the sunnah of talaq. That is in according to the madhab, not just the, the madhab of Imam Ahmed, meaning that it is impermissible and you should not divorce during, the, uh, during a woman's menses. 
And the last thing, which is impermiss- uh, Im- uh, impermissible for the women during her menses, is it to dad be ashur, meaning that she uh, to count her idda as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّسْنَا بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوْ and so the scholars also differ with the terminology quru. some of them at times they refer to quru, meaning uh, by uh, the monthly cycle and some of them refer to the quru as their uh, as uh, 30 days as the period of a month so this this is gets we don't want to get into depth on uh, the uh, the differences here we just want to gain what we can gain some basic fiqh and basic understanding for uh, with regards to basic fiqh and especially with this issue with regards to uh, tahara and menses menstruation for the women so we hope that this will be a benefit and we'll continue on in our study about this and we'll take our time and try to gain benefit with regards to the chapter of menstruation so that way we will be on ilm wa fiqh wa basira bi'idhnillah ta'ala and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam